So I'd like to convene this meeting of the Board of Directors for the San Lorenzo Valley Water District for June 1st, 2023. Colleen, would you please take roll? President Smalley. Here. Vice President Hill. Here. Director Ackman. Here. Director Falls. Here. I wanted to mention that Director Pulse is um, participating virtually and it was planned that way. And Director Mayhood. Here. Okay. Um, any additions or deletions? Staff has none. Okay. Uh, oral communications. Uh, this is for any members of the public who wish to bring up something that is not on the agenda this evening. Does anybody want to comment? I see Jim Mosier. Um, he raised his hand. Jim. Uh, yes, thank you, uh, Board of Directors. I just wanted to mention um, that uh, the uh, Budget and Finance Committee, which I'm a citizen member, had looked into a program <clears throat> called the Household Low Income Assistance Program. It's funded by the state. It's a pass through through the federal, uh, one of the federal uh, infrastructure bills. <clears throat> and it offers up to 15000 on a one-time basis for low income ratepayers uh, to have uh, their bills paid. And uh, the Friends of San Lorenzo Valley Water has been in touch with the organization in Watsonville that administers this program. And, I, um, and uh, it's called the um, Central Coast Electric um, Services, I think, CCES. Um, and they have, I know they've contacted the district. We've also been in touch with the uh, Mountain Community Resources and Valley Churches United, two organizations that would be uh, able to help people fill out the rather cumbersome uh, forms and process that people have to go through. It would not involve a lot of the other district staff at all. So I think it's potentially a win-win to help folks who are struggling uh, in the Valley from post-fire and floods and, and other reasons um, not to be able to pay their bills. Um, and what I think would be helpful uh, for those folks is for the district to reach out as best we can to let people know who are behind on their bills or having, uh, having trouble paying their bills to let them know about the program. Um, and I know that we had, uh, we had in the last mailing uh, to ratepayers a, a notice about it. The one thing that I think would be helpful is to have something maybe on the home page of the web of the water district web page, a website to let people uh, so that you can easily find uh, the information about this and get them referred to the CCES. And right now, I, I had quite a bit of trouble finding it on the website. It took four clicks to find on our website how to get in touch with this organization in Watsonville. So uh, anyway, I wanted to let the full board know about this program. It's a way that we can help given the uh, uh, struggles that many people are having in the Valley to uh, pay their bills. It would be a win-win uh, and not take a lot of uh, our staff's time to make it happen. Thank you. Okay, thanks Jim. I'll leave it with staff to follow up on that if appropriate. Can I comment or no? Not, um, no, okay. I don't, no, gotcha. don't want to discuss. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, moving on then to new business. Um, first item 4A is uh, general legal counsel. Yes, thank you, Mark. Uh, the district has. Uh, ex excuse me, Mark. Sorry. Yes. Could we could we agendize that um, uh, program that um, Jim Mosher was talking about? I would think that uh, the Budget and Finance Committee could discuss that and then bring that or, up. Or assign it to the Budget and Finance Committee if it isn't already yes. there. I think that that's yeah. a yeah. yeah. Okay. Thanks, Bob. Thanks. Okay. 
Thank you. Okay, the district has contracted, contracted with the Nassiman uh, for general legal services since uh, June 2017. On May 26, uh, 2023, the district sent notice uh, discharging Nassiman as general and special legal counsel effective uh, May 31st, 2023 due to non-performance. Moving forward, there is an immediate uh, need to contract with new legal services. Uh, the district manager has reached out to White Brenner, uh, which specializes in water law with over 30 years experience and has available staff to immediately in removing uh, the backlog of projects requiring legal counsel. Ms. Uh, Brenner is, is here tonight uh, via video conference to address the board and provide uh, her background. The district's procurement uh, policy section E provides for non-compliance negotiations, basically sole source when the district manager deems an emergency exists with ratification by the board of directors. The absence of legal counsel is considered an emergency. Um, there is a motion attached to the, uh, the memo and at this point um, uh, we can introduce Barbara Brenner. Okay. Um, welcome Ms. Brenner. Um, if you could take uh, maybe two minutes, uh, introduce yourself, your firm, um, to the board and the staff and members of the public. I'd be happy to. Good evening. I'm Barbara Brenner, one of the founding partners of the White Brenner firm. We, uh, there was four of us originally 10 years ago that formed the firm. We all came from larger law firms and I was specifically seeking to spend uh, more time locally, though some that has worked to some extent, but to some extent I'm still traveling quite a bit. Not, not too much, not as much as I used to be. I used to travel a lot throughout the state. And that's because my water practice is throughout the state. I've practiced up in the Shasta watershed all the way down to the Colorado River issues and a lot of things in between. <clears throat> I wanted to try and get some focus in the Sierras, which is where I spent a lot of my time. And I live in the foothills of the Sierras and I've accomplished that with uh, some projects and, and smaller water districts in that area. But I've now spending quite a bit of time down south doing groundwater adjudications predominantly. That's SIGMA, the Sustainable Groundwater Management Act has become quite the force in our industry. And so I've ended up doing <clears throat> quite a bit of that work in the last few years and it's brought me into adjudications. So in addition to the specialized water work, I have uh, been doing general counsel work for the same number of years, uh, just about a few less. And uh, we pitched you guys back in the day, several years ago, and uh, Nossaman beat us out. So um, I'm glad that I was contacted and uh, would really love to help you guys out and, and see if we can't gain a very positive and um, resource, resourceful relationship. Thank you, Ms. Brenner. Um, questions from board members? Uh, Gail? Hi, Barbara. Nice to meet you. Um, I guess I would like to hear how you work um, with other members of your staff to um, work as a team to deal with all the different tasks. And the reason I ask this is because there's a lot of, there's a wide range of expertise that's needed in the tasks that come with uh, working with a little water district like ours. I mean, there's a wide range in terms of breadth of topics, but also difference of expertise. And so what I'm mostly concerned about is how you work with other people to sort of um, delegate ac activities to make sure that things get done on time. Uh, we have task meetings, regular task meetings, as well as litigation meetings, number one. We, uh, we still go into the office and actually talk to one another, as well as doing Zoom meetings um, for those that are at home at the time. And we also use an app called Slack so that we have, we set up uh, individual clients and matters in Slack so that everybody in that channel knows what's happening at all times. And then you can tag people 
to uh, communicate, to you know, ring an alarm in their system so that we're not just depending on email and um, calendaring devices. And we, what we do is, is we assign a particular um, lead and then somebody that's an assistant to that lead and then individuals from there, depending on the task, to the particular task, and that, and then con continue to communicate through email, CCing each other, so that everybody stays on the same page. And then, of course, we have our paralegals that calendar things, and we calendar, you know, rec our municipal work like we calendar litigation. So we we represent several cities and other special districts. So we're used to the variety of tasks. That's one of our main reasons for forming the firm was to represent smaller districts and uh, medium-sized districts because we are a smaller firm. And we the two of us left our larger firms for conflict purposes. So we we instantly set it up to be a a uh, general municipal practice with particular specialties, mine being environmental uh, and natural resources, the water arena and uh, litigation. We also have specialized land use. We've, uh, we, we all dabble in contracts, but then we've also got a gentleman that uh, is more specific on construction contracts and those type of projects. We we got a lot of um, water supply and sewer treatment type projects, the capital improvement projects, as well as Prop 218. And so within the firm, as the younger attorney develops or a new attorney comes into our firm, they everybody needs to know how to do the general municipal practice, but then it's up to you to determine what area you would like to develop as a as a specialized area and and then that's that's kind of how we've built this firm over the last 10 years so we have we also have another more advanced task app application that is used that has deadlines and so at the task meeting you make sure that the task is assigned. They know that it's assigned. There's a, a deadline um, and pre-deadline. So there's a deadline to get whatever the product is out to the client, and then there's internal deadlines for review, et cetera. So that, that's how we handle it. Thank you. Yeah. Hi. Um, how many people do you have on staff by specialty? I mean, how many attorneys, how many paralegals? What's the total size of your company? We have uh, two paralegals and a office manager, a legal secretary, and we have one, one, two, three, four, five, five partners, Two of counsel, and then one. We just lost an associate, so one, two associates, and three law clerk, two law clerks. And we just hired another part-time contract attorney. <clears throat> We're in the search for an additional full-time attorney as well. Do you see our? The workload that we would have for you as being um, being a challenge for the amount of staff you have, or is this something you can absorb pretty quickly? I think we can absorb it fairly quickly, and one of the reasons why I say that is because uh, my schedule, I just uh, ended in a phase of an adjudication a couple of weeks early. We knocked out a lot of the briefing, et cetera, that goes along with the end of a case. And um, we are also dying out on another client that was a, a city, a pretty large city, that uh, it was a mutual agreement to separate. And we've been tagging along, tagging along since the beginning of the year. And, and we're just about done with that tagging along. So 
it's uh, the summertime is the this spring and summer is is a good time for us actually. Thank you. Amy? So, <clears throat> hi, thank you, um, first of all, for your willingness to step in here on such short notice. I really appreciate um, that you were, you know, still interested in, in um, working with us. Um, I, I think that uh, it, it's been made clear that we have a, a rather significant backlog of work and um, some urgency to um, moving through it. I, I understood from the um, staff report that you, you know, we're going to apply your resources to doing that. But can you give us a sort of a time frame for how quickly you think you can get us back to, you know, so current in terms of our, um, you know, the backlog of legal needs that we have? No, I don't know if I can give you a timeline given the information that I have to date. I, I did speak with Mr. Rogers and we, we did chat about the list and he provided me a list of projects. Um, but I can't say that I've studied that list to really understand or, or, or we've walked through that list to really understand what it's gonna take to, to come up to speed. Um, I, uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to really answer that with any sense of um, firm, with any firm response. I, I appreciate that. I wonder if you think you'll be in a position by our next board meeting later this month to give us more information and, and a, a clear picture. I should be able to, yeah, if I can have a a little more in-depth conversation with folks over there. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that's obviously contingent upon whether we go ahead with this motion. Right. Yes. yes, okay. okay. <laughs> uh, 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 Bob, questions? Yeah, and Rick, uh, excuse me, uh, Mark, how do you want to handle this? I've got uh, some questions about the agenda item, and then I have some specific um, concerns about the contract. Um, let's go to the, the general ones first. Uh, if it's specific to the contract, uh, are those of a nature that uh, you feel we need to vet tonight? Oh yeah. All right. Yeah, let's, there's, let's a, there's, a, there's a couple. Of, there's a couple of terms in there that are what I would classify as extremely firm friendly, um, and I just need to get clarification to make sure that I'm reading it right. Okay. Not being right. an attorney and not playing one on TV, but I, I do read contracts a lot. Um, would it be fair to say, Rick, that the non-performance that you're referring to with Nossam then has to do with the fact that we have a tremendous backlog of uh, agreements that need to be resolved and they offered no path forward to resolving them? That is correct. How many agreements do we have in backlog right now? I can't give you that number, Bob. Um, we have made some significant progress. We have made some other progress on some of um, them, but I can't give you a direct number. When you say we've we've made progress, has this been making progress with um, White Brenner or with other attorneys? No, with Nossam. Um, oh, with Nossam. Since our last uh, board meeting closed session, we've made some progress. We received the two consolidation agreements uh, draft from Nossiman. So if I'm understanding correctly, Nossiman will be, even though they've been discharged, they will be doing some work for us. Um, and then other work will go to White Brennan. The plan would be if the board approves the agreement tonight, it would be uh, senior staff and myself to meet with uh, Ms. Brenner and discuss the list and um, project the path forward. And that would be a question that uh, I would ask uh, Ms. Brenner if she feels that she needs support from Nossiman or not. Well, I mean, some of these I, I think are are kind of in progress. And so I don't know how to 
how the handoff gets handled, but there probably needs to be a handoff or, you know, if they're far enough along, maybe they finish them. So what I'm hearing here are those, even though they've been discharged, they're still doing work and they could conceivably do work for us going forward. I think they could conceivably do work for us, but through um, White Brenner. I see. I've had conversations with Nassiman since the termination uh, discharge letter, and I was, you know, basically told that they would get caught up on as much as they possibly could before this date, but I have not received anything. So I don't, I don't have much uh, faith in any much more work coming out of Nassiman. Would you say that we have uh, more than a dozen agreements in backlog? Sorry, say it again. Would you say that we have more than a dozen agreements in backlog? No, I would think around four or five. Okay, interesting. Um, okay, well, uh, I'd like to have a recurring update on this situation and the agreements that are in backlog and the ones that still need to be done until this uh, situation clears. And in, in my opinion, if, if after reviewing this with um, Wade Brenner, there's still a concern about how we can clear these agreements quickly, um, that we need to find additional help. Um, so, I, I mean, I, I don't see this necessarily as an exclusive. What is exclusive is we need to get work done, some of which has been festering for a while, and um, it needs to get done ASAP. I, I didn't necessarily hear the staff numbers at, at White Brenner that would lead me to conclude that they will be able to clear these quickly but we will definitely see what they have to say, hopefully at the next uh, board meeting. I, I think this is something the board needs to keep their finger on um, pretty closely in, in order to make sure that the district itself is fulfilling the obligations that we made, not only to community members, um, but also to our suppliers. And, and the plan moving forward, uh, Director Foltz, is to, is to meet with uh, White Brenner go through the list with senior staff, then do a monthly report to the board up to a quarter and then quarterly reports to the board of our status moving forward. And that would, include, that would include both retrospective view as well as prospective view. That's correct. That'd be great. I, I did have uh, one question for uh, Ms. Brenner. Um, as a 10 year user of Slack myself and integrated very tightly into our operations, including code repository. Um, are you saying that you're going to bring Rick and his staff into your Slack for communication? We have used Slack with clients on a specific channel during uh, certain procedures, uh, but I've never used it on an ongoing basis. It's something we can certainly discuss. And uh, if, if it's if it's something that the, they're comfortable with and, and works well, I'd, I'd be happy to do it. I, I, I'm only um, I, I'm only concerned about the speed with which things get done, and I find Slack to be a very efficient, very fast way to communicate. And given that there probably are a handful of these agreements that are very specific and need very immediate attention, and it, it might be something to consider but only if all parties are interested in it. We, we use it quite frequently with our suppliers and, and contractors and it, it works great. So yeah, I'm glad to hear I, you with I enjoy it. Yeah, our team uses it all the time. <laughs> yeah, right, so yeah. do we. Um, okay, so, Rick, um, Mark, that's, that's basically all I have on questions, okay. but I did want to talk about the contract at some point. Okay, uh, let me do another round of questions more to see if either your thoughts have generated any other questions or if there's anything on contract from anybody else. Joe? Uh, no. Joe? No. Jamie? Okay. Um, I do, before we go into contract, Bob, I do have some general questions that I'd like to get out also. Yes. 
Of course. Um, so, uh, and to Rick, um, what's your proposed length of time um, for the contract that we would be issuing here? What are your thoughts on that? I do believe the contract states it's a five-year contract. Basically, and uh, Barbara can correct me if I'm incorrect, basically it locks in the rate for five years and there's some inflation and maybe increases in the rate over years. I would recommend that we enter into that agreement. Um, it does have the clause in the contract that we can terminate that agreement at any time, just as uh, the same as NASA. I really uh, believe that, you know, Nossman's qualifications are a lot of the <coughs> districts looking for water rights, uh, environmental, CEQA, um, contract, and that. You, you said Nossman, did you? I'm sorry, uh, White Renner's uh, background yeah. with CEQA, contract, um, water quality, and so forth. I, what I don't want to do is I don't want to hire a, a legal firm and then six months down the road talk about going out to bid and having to re-educate another legal firm or even go through that process. We can terminate the agreement at any time with yeah. white rent. Okay. Um, but you did talk about uh, more either formal or frequent reporting back to the board on performance, given that this is a, a new firm. Um, and for now, at least, this is uh, going directly to them rather than RP. Uh, reporting back to the board on uh, assessment from your perspective, are they being successful? Are they delivering? So that we're not back into a similar uh, situation that we have in the last several months with NASA. So. That's correct. It basically the title is for progress. Um, I'm concerned about going into depth on reporting back to the board because of it, there's a confidentiality okay. issue, um, but it would be a, a title and where we are in the process okay. on a monthly basis for the first three months, and then I would recommend four. Okay. And from my perspective, uh, I, I did hear the request, I believe it was from Jamie, to report back at the next board meeting on that list of deliverables. I don't, given the, the, the list that I've seen before, I don't know that that's going to be realistic, but I would certainly hope by the first meeting that we had in July uh, that they're able to do that and come back to us with a, with a realistic perspective on when they can work with those. So, Great, if in two weeks, if not, the next meeting immediately after that. After that. We will shoot for uh, the 15th, but if we don't make it, we don't make it, and we'll have something to say how the progress is going on the schedule. Right. We'll be on the agenda. Okay. All right, okay. Um, given that, uh, Bob, questions, comments that you have on the contract then? Yeah. I you know, Rick, if you can help me out here, um, I, I was actually looking specifically for a clause regarding termination for convenience, and, and I'm I'm struggling. Could you point out where that is in the in the contract? Give me a second, or Barbara, maybe you'll go right to it. But I did see it. Yeah, I'm looking as well. Uh, section seven, term and termination. You know, it's it's not really unambiguous that it's termination for convenience. It does talk about a five-year agreement, which I think is excessive, and a automatic renewal for another five years, which, given that we really don't want to be um, in a situation where we're not reviewing, I mean, Nossaman was sort of coming up for review anyway. Um, I, I think both of those are, are excessive, but I do not see an explicit termination for convenience. There's usually very specific language around it. And this one, at most, you could say upon termination, but within the context of the sentences before, it would be around termination of the agreement uh, where we would give notice 30 days prior to the subsequent term, and that would terminate it. But if there's an intent to offer a termination for convenience, I think we need additional language to make that explicit. 
That's uh, fine. I think I'm looking for the I'm looking for another paragraph that does have the the language that you're thinking about, but we'll we'll be happy to make it clear. That's not a problem. Yeah, that'd be great. Because yeah, and if you want to then then if you don't you want to change it to annual, whatever term you want to change it to that you're comfortable well, with is fine. Well, well, if we were actually locking in rates for X number of years, I would be more inclined to a a term greater than one. But uh, you know, effectively, if we're adjusting it for uh, cost of living, and our next adjustment comes up in seven months anyway, it's sort of like, well, maybe we do three years with a one year annual renewal. Five year renewal is is really aggressive. Okay, but. That's just my opinion. That doesn't mean I'm speaking for the board. So, um, you know, whether or not anybody else has that, but I, I mean, the, the term in this is, is just excessive in, in my opinion. Uh, by the way, I, I served in the committee that actually did the interviews for Churchwell White, was it back then? Yeah. 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 And so I'm, I'm familiar with your firm. It was a very close, um, it was a very close game down between the two of you. So, um, yeah. Thank you. Um, the, the second, question I had was around a work product. Uh, it looks explicit that you own the originals of the work product, but um, who owns the actual intellectual property associated with the work product? Attorneys retain their, their work product, their notes, et cetera, and the client files all, all go to the client, originals, copies, et cetera. So um, contracts, that that type of thing, any any work associated, you know, any memos, any work associated with things like comments on an environmental document or um, anything else is the clients. But my notes that I handwrite and that I keep as my attorney notes, those are those are kept with the firm. That's about it. There, um, okay. So I, I, I think I just want to make sure I'm clear on this that so for example, if you develop a, a contract template um, uh, and you know in the future you're not our firm, we can continue using that contract template or any other contract that we may have, uh, done in conjunction with you, we can use that for any purpose going forward under any circumstance. Yes, and we and we actually encourage that. We encourage the development of, you know, this is our format of how we do this type of contract and how we do this type of contract and encourage you to use them so that our review time on subsequent contracts of the same type is, is much shorter. And then those are yours. I mean, those those become yours. We don't say you have to give that back and you can never use it again. No. Right. Well, just wanted to make sure I was. No, no, no. I, yeah. 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 Um, I, I work in intellectual property, so I get very sensitive about who owns what. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, and Rick, it, it says in here in the agreement that we've. Um, reviewed this with its own legal counsel. Uh, um, have we done that? No, we have not. So basically, just so everybody knows. Okay, well, I'd like to offer a, a formal amendment that we modify the, the term um, uh, to three years with a 60, not 30 day notice for uh, re, um, whether or not we want to renew and that the renewal be one year um, and that language specific to um, termination for convenience be added to the uh, section seven. Okay, thank you for that, Bob. Um, I'd like to hear from any of the rest of the board on those uh, or on the friendly amendment that Bob is making to the motion is written on the length of term and then on this uh, uh, determination clause. Thoughts, Jamie? They seem reasonable. I, I, I would be inclined to support this friendly amendments. Okay, yeah, I'll support that. All right, okay. All right. So 
yes to that. The three-year term in particular. Okay. Um, given that, I'd like to uh, make a motion that the board direct the district manager to enter into a contract with White Brenner LLP for general and special legal services under the terms of the attached agreement um, with the uh, amendments as proposed by Director Foltz to this. Second. Second. Okay, thank you. Um, before we uh, take a vote on this, let me ask from the general public, any comments on this? Seeing none. Uh, Holly, can you take a roll call, please? President Smalley? Yes. Vice President Hill? Yes. Director Ackman? Yes. Director Fulz? Yes. Director Mayhood? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you very much for the opportunity. I really appreciate it. I look forward to working with you all. We look forward to getting documents and input from your firm. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Be careful what you wish for. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get it done. Oversight. Uh, well, I, I, I was posed the question, so let me ask that. Ms. Brenner, now that we've made this motion, uh, are you available to stay for the meeting uh, in the event that we have uh, questions during the meeting? Or uh, I'm, I'm happy to stay. I'll probably mute and go off my video. I've been in this litigation for the last several weeks, so I'm a little tired. But um, I'm, it, And I okay. don't know anything about the agenda items, but I'm happy to, it's, to help it's if, if it's possible. I would expect if we had any questions more from a procedural and Brown Act issue, which I think you're familiar with. Um, so, yeah. yes, okay. Uh, if needed, and I hope not, we can call on you. Okay, uh, moving on to the next item then, uh, which is uh, the uh, Special District Risk Management Authority. Um, board election. So, uh, Rick? I think the district secretary wants to present this item to the board. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, um, uh, every uh, four years, there is an election of the um, uh, board. Let me see if I should read this. <laughs> SDRIMA board of directors election is coming up. And uh, they have come. Uh, uh, they have collected all of the. Um, the election committee has collected all of their nominations, and have confirmed four candidates that met the requirements. The um, uh, resumes of those four candidates were included in the packet, and um, now they would like us to choose three of the four um, to vote for. I'm sorry, I wasn't prepared to well, you present it. No, I had you, you as the presenter. You did CSCA quite well last Okay, time. you covered it appropriately. Okay. Okay. Um, we have four candidates in front of us. Uh, we need to uh, vote for three. Um, I have thoughts on which three, but I wanted to see what anybody else from the board has as far as an opinion. Uh, or shall I jump in first on this? I see Jeff raising his hand. Okay, Jeff. So I want to support the three incumbents. And the reason I want to support the three incumbents is they are all employees or directors of small independent districts such as ours. The fourth candidate uh, that is not an incumbent uh, is employed as a city manager and uh, in a large county and is only marginally connected to small districts like ours. So I think we would be much better represented by the other three. Um, those are the same three that I had flagged. Yes. Uh, 
Jamie, any? I, I didn't have a really significant opinion about okay. this, but the okay. incumbents seemed fine. Okay. Um, I guess I um, thought that Aquanetta Warren brought something to the mix that the other people didn't, coming from um, people, you know, coming from Groveland and Honey Lake, those are really small areas. And what Aquanetta Warren brings is um, an understanding of the ideas of uh, water equity and inclusivity, which I thought was probably something that um, this organization could use. So I okay. I was hoping that she would be among um, them. And I guess of the others, I thought other three, I thought Robert Swan was just looking at his resume, the, the way he wrote his uh, was the strongest of the candidates um, of the other two. And I thought Jesse Claypool's was not very well written. And I guess I wasn't very impressed. But I don't have, you know, strong feelings on this. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, I just I just felt like I should mention that there, there are other things besides representing a tiny district in the mountains. Yes. <laughs> And um, now that the name is mentioned, Jesse, I do have to agree with you on that. So um, strike what I said earlier about three. Yes, it was uh, not Jesse and Aquanetta, but uh, Bob? I agree with Gail. I have the same, um, I, I had the same one, uh, impression when I reviewed him. Obviously, we don't know these people well, um, but based on the, the writing, um, I think Gail hit it on, hit the nail on the head. Okay. Then I'd like to make the motion that we um, propose a vote for Robert Swan, Aquanetta Warren, and uh, Sandy Seifert Rafferson. Second. Um, any comments from members of the public on this? Seeing none, uh, Holly. President Smalley. Yes. Vice President Hill. Yes. Director Ackerman. Yes. Director Fulce. Yes. Director Mayhood. Yes. Motion passes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, moving on then to the uh, next item, I believe is uh, uh, unfinished business. Um, the emergency contract for exploring repair of the Quail Hollow Road. Yes, and the district engineer is here to present this item to the board. Thanks, Ray. This is rather an unusual request. Uh, as you are aware, Quail Hollow Road, where we put our pipe in last year, is washing out. It has been made clear to us by the county that because the failure is within the bounds of the utility trench, we will be required to address it. The problem is that in this area, the water table is exceedingly high. It's within 18 inches of the asphalt, or at least it was last time we had it open. And the area is Sand Hills habitat, making it a little more interesting to work in. What I'm proposing here, what I'm requesting, is that we issue an emergency contract to Anderson Pacific, who is prepared to be on site Monday morning, to perform an exploratory repair in which they would, one section at a time, remove failed asphalt, remove failed backfill, determine what we need to do in order to actually repair this area. And staff have been in contact with county, department, public works, roads, basically uh, Casey there, to determine what we think the preferred backfill is going to be, which is going to be largely native and road base as opposed to the slurry that was originally installed. In addition, we are looking at possible dewatering of the site in order to ensure that we actually get good backfill, get good compaction, and can repave. 
currently the area is plated and is becoming, it is becoming very difficult to prevent it from being a safety hazard, thus the emergency nature of this contract. With that, I will happily take questions. Okay. Um, why don't we start with you, Bob? Uh, yeah, I just had a couple. Um, in terms of the original construction, that was done in um, consultation with the county as well, correct? Correct. It was performed to the county in detail. To, to, their, to their requirements and specifications. Um, and, and I'm assuming we're going to coordinate very closely with them on this as well. Um, how does how do we get to a resolution given that county has requirements and what might be done here may not fit into those requirements? We have staff have already discussed this with the county and have determined that there are a couple of possible backfill sections that we can use without further discussion we have this in writing and if we determine we see what's under there that something different is required they are aware that they will need to be responsive quickly so that we can determine basically between myself them and our contractor what the correct response will be okay so they've already indicated a willingness to modify their requirements for this um, in order to accomplish the goal of getting that road back in shape. Correct. Well, that's good news. Um, but I'm glad to hear that. I, I mean, I think it's important for agencies to cooperate uh, on this sort of thing and really keep in mind that the that the real objective is to getting the motoring public back into um, you know, not having to worry about whether or not there's going to be an issue there. Um, so I, I'm glad to see that you guys are working really closely with them. Thank you. Okay. Jamie? So um, as part of this exploratory work, I mean, I, I understand that we're trying to understand the depth of the water damage. Um, will we be able to put our main back in the same trench or is there a possibility we'll have to retrench elsewhere? We will not be relocating our main. Okay. So the, the exploratory contract starts at, you know, what, 250, but we don't really know what the final financial cost of this work is going to be because we've got to do this exploratory effort and see what the depth of the damage is. That's correct. Big. <laughs> it is it is a fairly significant chunk. We've put the two hundred fifty thousand not to exceed number on there, so that we don't just have the contractor run hog wild, but we can kind of keep a lid on it. And in addition, we will be submitting this to FEMA under the category C in the not the current disaster, but the disaster that is just about to open up for which the kickoff meeting is next week, the February storms. Right. So can I ask you, though, given how, how high the water table rose during this last event, right? I mean, obviously, this is going to be a continuing problem if we have these kinds of rainy seasons in the future. Can we get away with not moving our main, or if, if, is this going to continue to be an issue? I don't believe it will continue to be an issue because we're not going to put slurry backfill back in. The, the use of slurry basically put a three-foot impermeable wedge on top of our pipe and forced the water down into the sand backfill and washed it out. Thank you. I'm done. Yep. I'm satisfied. Yep. Yeah. I, the... Um, the number was a little eye-watering when I first saw it, especially when it says exploratory, and I'm going, oh my gosh, if this is exploratory, what, you know, what is the total thing? But is, can, can you just explain a little bit further on this? Is this, is it not so much exploratory as maybe incremental? In other words, is it, does it sound like they're going in and taking out one little chunk and trying to fix that and then going in and seeing how much more? Or can, can you explain a little bit more to me how the process will... Yeah, I would suggest that it is both exploratory and incremental okay. because 
we won't be opening up the entire trench all at once. Yeah. That way lies disaster. We'll be opening a small piece of the trench at a time. And it's exploratory in that we need to determine not just how much of the area has failed or how much of the volume really has failed, but in addition, what are the subsurface water conditions and what are the subsurface compaction conditions? Once we've determined that, we'll be able to more effectively turn this from exploratory into incremental. I think the initial probably two days wherein we first open up, you know, first open the road up, look at whether or not we need to dewater and to what degree and determine what has been washed out of what is still there is going to be the, I would say the exploratory in terms of techniques and methodologies portion. After that, the exploration would be limited to simply the extent. And if I could ask one more question. Sure. Yeah. Um, what do you, uh, when you say dewater, um, are, you, are you talking about something that you're just waiting for, uh, you know, are you doing something to get the water table to go down for now? Or are you talking about something that's a more permanent action to try to keep the water table down, which seems like it might be hard to do it, so. I don't think we are prepared to spend the tens of millions of dollars that would be required to do that. Yeah. So this is a temporary condition. Okay. We would be placing, if necessary, and we don't know yet, but if necessary, we would place a well point upslope of our work area by probably 40 or 50 feet in order to pull groundwater from a spring that is just upslope of where we're where the failure is okay. in order to prevent that water from flowing through the work area so we can actually control the amount of moisture in the soil while we're compacting. Thank you. Okay. Can I come back to a quick question? Let me ask a couple of questions first and then, yeah. then I can come back to you. Okay. I have another two. So, um, are you involving any outside engineering expertise in this, or is this between our registered civil engineer or licensed civil engineer, Josh Wolf, and the counties similar on their side to say, yeah, this is what we think is appropriate? This will be a collaboration between myself, the licensed civil engineers at the county, and the very experienced foreman that Anderson Pacific has provided us. Okay. So we have both book knowledge and uh, street smarts as it were. Okay. Um, and the way you're describing it, uh, it sounds like it's possible that the, uh, the material beneath the piping may be washed out also that we put into there. And we're gonna have to go investigate that before we can determine how much we're gonna have to do as far as repairs? Correct. Okay, all right. And you say native, um, and I just wanna be clear for anybody else also, you mean soil of the same type or backfill of the same type as what's next to the trench? Correct. And okay. fortunately for us, Granite Rock Sand Plant is about 500 feet away. <laughs> And okay. it's the definition of for this area. <laughs> and if, if we do that sand backfill above it, it's likely then that the water would flow through there, same as the surrounding material? Yes. Okay. The idea is to create a, a backfill at least in the foot or two above the pipe that as closely mimics natural conditions as possible. Okay. Um, and then what do you guess, what do you estimate, how many days of work does this up to 250,000 buy us? Is that four days? Is that 20 days? I think it buys us about two to two and a half weeks. Okay. And that's roughly seven hour days because that's what the county will allow us to work. Okay. And seven and a half hour days is it Monday through Friday possible that we do this not simply exploration and 
consideration for repair within this home? Or do you expect you coming back to us then? Now that we know everything, here's what the repair cost is going to be for us. The intent is for the repair to be the way that we restore as we complete the exploration. I.e., we open up the road, we determine what we need, we do that thing all as one operation. <coughs> right. But uh, do you think that there's a possibility for the for the length of the trench? We're able to do that in that two and a half years? It is possible, but I think it's unlikely. Okay. Okay. And I expect that I will be coming back again or something again, but I would rather not just All right. um, issue a larger contract. Don't have, don't have Let me go to Jeff first and then I'll come back. Jeff. Okay. So going back to your comment very early in the discussion, um, and my understanding is that we have a situation where we're on a slope. The native soil in the area is actually sand. It's very permeable. Water flows through it. We dug a trench, we put pipe down, and we backfilled the trench with something that is relatively impermeable, which in effect created a dam, built up hydraulic pressure on one side or the other, and water had to go somewhere, so it started washing out the repair. Is that a reasonable assumption of what you think yes. happened? Okay. So what we're doing now is removing the impermeable. We, we think we'll remove the impermeable barrier and replace it with something that will allow the water to continue to flow through and grow. Correct. That's the strategy. Yeah. Okay. Jamie? Um, I'm fully prepared for you to say no and laugh, but is there, does FEMA cover exploratory work? Is this, I mean, would... When this goes to FEMA, it will be presented as we have to repair the road. This is what it took to repair the road. Because we are not able to say in advance, we need to do exactly X or Y or Z, but rather we need to find out what the problem is as part of how we are fixing it. FEMA is accustomed to that. Okay. okay. Uh, well, given what I've heard, I'll make a motion that the board direct the district manager to enter into a contract with Anderson Pacific Engineering Construction in the amount not to exceed two hundred fifty thousand for the purposes of repair of the failed potable water line in Quail Hollow Road. Second. Okay. Uh, any members of the public have comments on this? Seeing none, um, Holly? President Smalley. Yes. Vice President Hill. Yes. Director Ackman. Yes. Director Falls. Yes. Director Mayhood. Yes. Motion passes. Okay. Um, moving on to item 5B. The biannual draft budget uh, for fiscal year 2023 2025 discussion. Uh, Rick? Yes, thank you. And uh, the district finance manager is here to give a presentation and answer the questions of the board. And I will ask her to <coughs> move forward. Okay, just to bring up. Okay, so this is the second round of operating revenue and expenses, the non-operating revenue and expenses in the capital budget portion. Um, so the second round, the changes in operating revenue um, for fiscal year 23-24 resulted in a uh, net increase of 5,000. Uh, this was to account for an increase in the LIWAP grant program. Um, were, so they, it, the original credit amount was for $2,000 max credit to customers, um, and they just recently increased it to the $15,000. Um, we haven't really seen a huge uh, 
participation in the program. So, you know, we're keeping up it at the 5,000 to be conservative. Uh, the change for fiscal year 24, 25 was to um, take into account the changes that were discussed in regards to the consumption amounts for Forest Springs and Brackenbrae and the CZU homes. Um, this resulted in a decrease to revenue of 104,000. Um, originally, we had uh, assumed that all homes would be back online. Um, we, for this round, we assumed that 50% of the remaining 62 CZU homes will be back online at four units per month. And for Forest Springs and Bracken Bray, we accounted for um, the homes that did not bur burn down at four units per month, whereas before we had um, assumed that all of them. Uh, the changes in operating expenses for fiscal year 23-24 resulted in a net increase of 25,000. Um, this was various changes that are listed below. Um, salaries and benefits were, updates were made based on MLU negotiations and uh, updated assumptions based on differences in separated employees versus new hires. Um, for contract professional services, we did some decreases in digital dock management offset by the increase of the fuel reduction contract of 25,000, which um, I had previously had incorrectly in the first round, and an increase of 2,000 for software. In fiscal year 24, 25, there was a decrease of 20,000 for digital dock management. Uh, decrease of 20K for architecture fees offset by the fuel reduction contract and the increase of 25,000 and 2K for the software. Uh, for maintenance, decrease of 15,000 for admin building remodel and um, the increase in general and administration is for the forgiveness of AR for the LIWAP program. Um, which I originally had $500 in there. And so I, you know, increased it around 4,500 to reflect um, the 5,000 in the previous slide of the um, operating grants for that program. Um, moving on to non-operating revenue for fiscal year 23-24 compared to the current fiscal year of 22-23, it increased 387,000 or 28%. This is primarily due to an increase in interest investments. Um, this year, 22, 23, assumes that the majority of the loan funds would have been spent by the end of the current fiscal year we're in. And so that's why it's uh, you know, a smaller <coughs> amount. And fiscal year 24, 25 compared to 23, 24 is a decrease of 273,000 or 16%. Um, primarily due to the decrease in interest investments. And that is because the loan funds are projected to be spent by the end of fiscal year 23-24. Uh, same report, but the capital contributions portion, 23-24 uh, compared to 22-23 decreased 988,000, primarily due to a decrease in expected FEMA reimbursements offset by an increase in capital grants. 24-25 compared to 23-24, increased 5.8 million, um, primarily due to an increase in expected FEMA reimbursements. Um, so the district is hopeful to have the large FEMA projects obligated by the end of 23-24, which I'll cover more um, in the capital budget per portion. Uh, moving on to non-operating expenses, uh, basically for both fiscal year 23-24 and 24-25, we have debt principal payments of 2.18 million. Um, and then this next page, I couldn't fit every the whole report on the screen, um, so I just kind of listed it out here, but I'm referencing page 85 of the agenda packet. Um, non other non operating expenses include Santa Margarita Groundwater Agency, uh, fiscal year 23, 24, and 24, 25 are both about 165,000. And then the total non operating expenses are about 2.3 million for each fiscal year. 
uh, capital budget portion. So the fiscal year 22-23 estimated actuals are um, 6.2 million. It was budgeted that we would spend 13.3 million for fiscal year 22-23. Uh, 2324 is expected at 27.1 million. 2425 is expected at 11.8 million. Um, and then we estimated future years 25 through 28 at a total of 17.6 million. Uh, so the FEMA projects, you know, make up about 38% and 46% of the total capital budget. 23 24 respectively uh so as you can see that's you know a large portion of what the budget the capital budget is being spent on the district cost share of fema um, is basically the portion of fema that is not reimbursable so the 10 percent for the czu fire projects and the 25 percent for uh the recent storm projects because those are the the uh, fema reimbursement percentage is 75 percent for those uh, this makes up 4% and 15% for fiscal year 23-24 and 24-25, respectively. Um, the, in excess of loans for our 14.5 and 15 million loans, uh, most of the projects are coming in over budget, so the overage of those will need to come out of reserves, 6% and 18% for 23, 24, and 24, 25, respectively. And the majority of the excess funds being from the FEMA projects. Um, so some things to note on the capital budget, the, the district's main focus is to complete the loan and grant funded projects as those have the project completion deadlines and des designated funds and most of those projects are already in process. Um, FEMA reimbursements, you know, as, as we all know, it's been a long drawn out process. Uh, the large projects, the raw and potable projects are uh, in the final review stages. So we are hopeful to have the projects obligated no later than uh, the end of 2324. So June 30th of 2024. And FEMA obligation means that the funds have been designated to the district for reimbursement. So basically they've awarded us those funds, um, but it has to go through you know, the long process, EHP review, environmental review, all that um, before we can get to obligation. <clears throat> Um, and then the district plans to review, you know, all the projects quarterly and provide updates on the status of the FEMA projects, expenses incurred, funding received, um, et cetera. And so the statements of revenue expenses and changes in reserves, I did notice that on the, um, report that was in the budget, there were some slightly uh, old amounts that were in the capital improvement portion. So I just wanted to include this in here to show that this was the corrected statement. Um, it, it was only off by like a million. Um, so you can reference what was in the agenda to this uh, to see. And we'll post this presentation on the website for uh, reference. Um, but to summarize the, the the statement of revenue, expenses, and changes in reserves, um, I'll highlight the increase or decrease in reserves, is basically you take the total revenues, uh, subtract the total expenses, and subtract the capital project expenses from reserves, um, and that will give you your what your in increase or decrease is. So the estimated actuals is an increase of 2.1 million. The 23-24 budget is a decrease of 3 million, primarily due to capital project expenses exceeding our grants and FEMA and debt funding. And fiscal year 24-25 budget is an increase of 4.2 million, primarily due to anticipated FEMA reimbursement. So we're expecting to get um, the 14.1 million um, of all those FEMA projects. 
And then a debt, the debt coverage forecast. Uh, so on the, the top one is the debt coverage forecast from the 21 through 23 adopted budget. And the bottom is the proposed from the, this proposed budget. Um, our, the district has you know, debt covenants that require a 1.25 debt coverage ratio. As you can see in fiscal year 25, 26, we do fall below that ratio if we're looking at the ratio excluding the fire recovery surcharge. Um, so, you know, obviously we're currently undergoing a rate study and so that will help analyze and, you know, discuss this matter further. Uh, so the next steps, uh, staff plans to bring the 23 through 25 full budget package to the June 15th Board of Directors meeting for review and if possible, adoption by the board. Questions? Okay. Um, I'd like to hear from the uh, Budget Finance Committee members. Um, first, uh, before we go to the, to the rest, uh, as the chair, Gail, sure. you want to start? Well, I want to thank Kendra and, and Rick for turning uh, this document around and doing a lot of work on a short time frame to first respond to the board's input about um, the changes they wanted to see in the operating revenues and operating expenses, and that's all incorporated here. And also um, in terms of dealing with the capital budget of, I think that um, both Jeff and I were concerned that maybe there was too much of the too much optimism about when when the projects were going to be done, and so they've gone back and spread them out, and also prioritized the ones that need shown in yellow in this diagram of what what ones we have to do, whether we like it or not. Um, even if we don't, you know, have uh, that, we have to spend the reserves to do it. So I appreciate um, all that you've done to to do that, and um, I think it's pretty clear where we are in the sense that we're um, the, the rate study and trying and having some kind of rate increase down the road is going to be necessary. Um, and then the other thing is, is that we're very, uh, we're, we're, we're a little, we're not entirely in control of our future here because the what the reserves do is so much a function of how fast the money comes back from FEMA. And so maybe after um, some of the other board members um, ask questions, I'd like your ideas about how we track our cash positions so that, you know, if money doesn't come in when you think it is, that we don't get ourselves into trouble. Jeff? So, first of all, I would like to thank staff and Kendra in particular for listening to our comments and our multitude of freak suggestions and such. Um, this is a vastly improved document from where we were before, going back a couple of meetings. Um, and my comments are about the content, not of, you know, I mean, what the numbers tell us, really not uh, the structure of the document. Uh, the document structure looks pretty good to me, but it's very clear that, uh, as Gail said, the um, rate study is essential, and uh, we're going to have to make some adjustments with, between inflation and the amount of capital projects we have underway, which we have to fund substantial portions of. Um, there's no way we can we can do that without moving forward to the rate study and, and uh, probably a significant adjustment. So, okay. Jamie? On that happy note, I'm not sure what to <laughs> I, I um, want to thank the staff um, and I want to thank the, the budget uh, and, and finance committee. Um, this is this is hard work and um, especially during uh, negotiate, salary negotiations. So, um, you know, I, I appreciate what went into this. Um, yeah, I, I agree with Jeff long term. And um, obviously we're going to have to have that conversation with the board, but um, I also think that uh, we are 
you know, we are stuck in the same position that every other water district ever, you know, we're all sort of fighting these same battles in terms of trying to um, bring our projects in uh, quickly enough. Labor across the state of California is at a premium. It's impossible to get these infrastructure projects done on time. You saw in our capital budget that we um, intended to spend more than $13 million this year, and we only got $6 million of work done. And that was in a year where we had a lot of emergency repair work that we had to do as a result of the storms. And yet we still, you know, didn't hit that number in terms of projection. And that's not a fault of staff. So... Thank you for this work, um, and I'm sorry that this continues to be such a frustrating process. <laughs> okay. Uh, Bob? Yeah, um, thanks, uh, Mark, and, and thank you, everybody, for uh, the work. I do have uh, a fairly lengthy series of questions. Um, I will go through them as quickly as we can. Um, just to confirm, uh, Kendra, the current budget is not forecasting any rate increase for either of the two years under consideration. Correct. And um, uh, and Brack and Bray and for are, we're already serving Brack and Bray and Forest Springs customers today. We are serving Forest Springs through a master meter. Um, so once we finish the consolidation, we'll be individually metering them, as I understand it. That's correct. Yeah. And so the, um, is the budget assuming, um, the master meter or individual meters? Um, so it's assuming individual meters. Do we think that will be done by, um, in, in the time frame of this budget? Uh, so we have budgeted them starting July of 2024, and I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, we're, this consolidation will be completed by the end of 2024, that June? Is, that is the expectation. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, and in your comment here about um, extending the waivers for the people that um, uh, lost their homes during the fire. I, I, I think it should be indefinite, just my own opinion, um, especially due to the county's torture chamber for rebuilding. Uh, it, we, there's no way that they can forecast how long it's going to take uh, to do anything. Yeah, we plan to bring that back to the next budget and finance meeting. Yeah, I, I would just encourage it to be indefinite for the CZU people. Um, I wasn't sure what you meant by digital dock management, the decrease of 20K. Um, yeah. um, Rick, that was in your budget. We, it, you had 20,000 for digital document management, and we decided to cut that. We removed oh. it. It's a, yeah, it I was understand that it was removed, but what was the task that you were talking about? I do believe the task was to convert paper documents to digital. Okay, so this assumes we're going to continue doing paper documents, invoices, purchase orders, all the rest of it. That is correct, but a good portion of it has been switched over to uh, digital or has been, uh, yeah, done uh, document by, by document management digital. I do believe we've done some of the engineering plans right. to switch, uh, or we've been doing that, you know, as as needed and charging those off to the general operations of each department. Okay, uh, Rick, I'll follow up with you independently on the on the scope there. Um, on, on the changes in operating revenue, that's on page eighty-two, five of looks like sixteen. I wish I had better eyes. Um, you know, the, the operating revenue bottom line is still misleading. I would very much, if we're not going to put in, sort if we're not going to take the, the fire recovery surcharge out of that calculation, as, as I believe the board had instructed staff to do, we at least need to put in a footnote indicating that that fire recovery surcharge is in fact not part of operating revenue for the purposes of applying it to operating expenses. 
Um, and it's just really important that that be crystal clear because that's the promise that the board made to the community. Okay. I, I, I'm, I'm, I continue to see the same formats and I'm, I'm, I, I just don't know what to do here because I thought we made it clear. Um, on the capital grants that you were talking about for the 23-24 budget, are those grants in hand or are those grants that we're expecting? Uh, any grant I included was an awarded grant. And um, can they be used for any use? I mean, I thought they were for particular purposes. I, I don't understand your question. Well, when you say capital grant, the way it's presented here is that it, it seems like we could use it for any purpose. Oh, that's... Grants don't normally work that way. Yeah, yeah. So that's just the summary of all of the grants that we were awarded. So the camp, the capital grants is a combination of our Brackenbrae Forest Springs Consolidation Grant, our... Um, Fall Creek Fish Slaughter, Fish Slaughter Grant, um, our AMI Meter Grant, um, the Fire Hardening Grant we received, and there might be another one I'm missing, but that's this just a general sum total of the grants that we are awarded. In, in the final budget, will that breakout be available and footnoted for people? Uh, yeah, I can include that. Um, in terms of FEMA reimbursement, we're forecasting not much for mm, next year compared to the year after. Is that is is the bulk of that due to the raw water pipelines? The fact that that's um, not reimbursement isn't coming in next year. Yeah. So. I budgeted the three million because that's a combination of what we've already submitted to FEMA that just has not been obligated yet, and what we're expecting to have obligated by the end of the fiscal year. Um, and then obviously you'll see the jump in fiscal year 24, 25, because once the projects are obligated, our intention is, so what you can do is you can take a, um, project drawdown so you can submit everything we've expensed to date for a reimbursement and then we plan to start submitting monthly invoices um, so eventually we'll start receiving those monthly reimbursement checks um, to help with you know cash flow concerns but yeah, yeah because um, you know it was quite a variance on FEMA Right. reimbursements for this year. I mean, that's, you know, 8 million more or less. I, yeah. I think this, I think this speaks to one of the things that I've been most concerned about. And I, I, I don't know that I've seen it yet, which is a monthly cash flow um, projection for the 24 months covered by this budget. Um, I, I know we've talked about how critical it is that we don't run out of cash, but right now I have zero feeling as to what our peak or trough is relative to um, cash flow and also relative to risk. So, you know, the federal government isn't necessarily the most um, reliable in terms of paying. And if something gets shifted out a couple months, I, you know, I want to be able to see where we are on the risk profile. Right. That, I think it's uh, absolutely essential. Yeah. So a cash flow projection is in my plans. Um, I just... It hasn't happened yet, but I, I do plan to do that. But it, but it will be in the final budget before we vote. Um, a 24-month cash flow projection? I don't... Well, you're talking about most of the money coming in 24-25. Now, we're going to be spending money at a furious pace according to the uh, capital budget we have. Okay, I will look into that further. I, I mean, I can't cash give flow you budgets are cash flow budgets are typically part of a operating budget. Okay, in my I, in my I will. I will look into that further. Well, okay. let me just say that I think um, that Kendra will be working on this, but there's only so many 
<laughs> hours in the day that she can do it. And so to try and also to try to do a cash flow analysis too far in the future is just a waste of time because you really don't know what's happening. Yeah. Uh, so I, I think what I would say here is that if you, you know, if you can, by the next time we bring this back, um, you can do it for 23, 24, that to my mind would be good enough. <laughs> yeah, that, that, we, that would certainly help. Yeah, that would help. And the, but to expect, you know, to try to do it any further, I just think it, you know, just it's, it's an exercise, but it's right. so low uh, certainty that it's just not a good use to your time. Yeah. So you might try building a, a spreadsheet model that you could easily move numbers around and say, you know, best, best case, worst mm -hmm. case, um, most likely. That, 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 that's, that's typically the way you do it in, the, in these budgeting activities is you have a model that allows you to move numbers around like exactly yeah. as you're talking about, Jeff. Yeah. And, and you're right, you would do a you know best case, worst case type in order to judge what kind of risk we have here with respect to cash flow. <coughs> I, look, I, I do not want this board or this district to be in a situation where we have another emergency because we're having too many emergencies here. This is what oversight's about. And I, I understand the time aspect of this, Gail, um, but I would only modify that perhaps if it can't all be done to incorporate um, regular routine cash flow uh, reports in, in for the board, um, which uh, I think would be something uh, new as well. I, I appreciate that this is work. This is one of the reasons why I was so adamant about wanting models from the company that was doing the rate study to be able to provide this kind of support for our staff. Um, you know, once the models are in place, using them is very straightforward. It doesn't take a lot of time. But I understand building the models is, is tough. Um, but that's what I wanted the rate study consultants to do, and I'm not sure we're going to be getting that. I hope we are, but it, it's not crystal clear to me that we are. Um, okay, next, um, on the next question here, you know, if you take out the um, the the surcharge, you know, our operating net and our net net um, goes down significantly, well under the three million that had been baked into the last um, rate increase, the three million in operating margin, which is only about maybe two thirds, uh, sixty percent, to maybe seventy five percent of what the district actually needs every year in order to meet its capital obligations, given the inventory that it has. In order to boost that back up to uh, 3 million under the current operating expense assumptions, which I'm anticipating will go up uh, as a result of other activity that's underway, there would need to be an immediate rate increase of about 11%, followed by rate increases of approximately three to 5%, depending on what the operating expenses ultimately do. Um, and, and that still doesn't address our unfunded capital projects. Um, and given the grant situation, I'm not sure we can depend on the kindness of strangers over a, um, you know, multi-decade period of time. So, you know, this, this budget here is um, assuming that you're going to manage operating expenses to be about what inflation forecast is when historically the district has routinely exceeded in inflation by anywhere from two to three X, two to three times uh, what inflation is. I'm not saying that we're gonna be increasing operating expenses by 15%, hopefully, but to say that we're gonna manage to be effectively inflation, I, I'm skeptical. The history has shown that is absolutely not possible to do the last uh, rate study that put together showed operating expenses at much lower than what they actually came in at. So I, I, I am I'm not at all convinced that we're going to be able to do this. Um, next question on the raw water pipeline uh, in the capital budgets: um, Are we assuming uh, plastic pipe? 
No, that determination has not been made. So the numbers in here are really pro forma. What are the numbers in here based on them? I think it's just a placeholder. We haven't made any determination of, of the type of construction and we are moving to those steps now. But the, the main the main response for FEMA is we have to get the scope of work right and FEMA will pay um, whatever the actual costs are. So that, that's our, our best placeholder number at this point in time. I think it would be very worthwhile, Rick, to uh, footnote the items in here that are placeholders, um, uh, that where a final determination hasn't been made. I mean, on other things that are in here, I think we're we're pretty clear about how the materials that are going to be used, and I understand we're estimating, but for those raw water pipelines, we haven't even made a determination on materials yet. So I think it'd be worthwhile at least uh, highlighting that on the um, three or four line items in here that are raw water. And we will be bringing an item back to the board at our second meeting in June to start the discussion of uh, continuing to, to make that determination. I, I hope that'll be accompanied with a ton of information. Okay, let's see here. Or in scrolling. Um, oh, uh, the last uh, question I had was on reserve balance, uh, res reserve balances by reserve account. Uh, will that be provided in uh, on June 15th? Because I didn't see it in here either. Um, it is on page. My apologies if I missed it. 88 of the agenda packet. Fabulous, thank you. Sorry, and I missed it. That's okay. okay. So what, what we're doing here is. Uh, so, so Bob, this is the one where I, in my PowerPoint, I said there was a slight error. Um, so in the PowerPoint um, for 23, 24 and 24, 25, there, the capital projects portion changed slightly. So just FYI on that, that'll be, updated in the full budget package. Okay, and just looking at these numbers, they 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 don't, is the, is the operating reserve at least meeting uh, the, the current uh, requirements? I, I know the capital reserve isn't. Uh, I mean, so the operating reserve is basically a formula to be 4.5 times the, yeah. uh, yeah, so, so that's why you'll see that the capital reserve is negative, um, because basically, you know, it's offsetting. Well, what? the capital reserve, the capital reserve has a formula too, but yeah, the district's exactly. never, the district's never been able to um, uh, put together the the finances to support that. Um, okay, okay, great, thank you. Sorry, I missed that. Okay. Thanks, Paul. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Um, okay, and Kendra, I really appreciate the really thorough job you did on the debt coverage forecast. Um, uh, and and the, the number that I look at, of course, is the uh, excluding fire recovery surcharge. So thank you for putting that one in. Mm -hmm. um, typically, I know that 1.25 is, is the absolute bare minimum, but from a reasonably prudent fiscal um, position, you, you don't want to get down to the minimum because, but especially in the area we live in because, you know, stuff happens. So, you know, a 1.5 is, I mean, legally we can go to 1.25, but in terms of a good position for us to be in, you know, 1.5 to 1.75 is, is, a, is a good place to be. Um, and I, I see we can meet the 1.5, excluding the fire recovery surcharge. I guess the question I would have is, in the debt covenant, are we allowed to use the fire recovery surcharge or not? Because it is a restricted uh, fund. Um, I don't know the answer to that, but I can look into that. Yeah, because that would be, I think, critical from, um, you know, 
depending on how the whole rate um, study thing goes, then the Prop 218 process and all that. Yeah, I will. I'll definitely look into that. Okay, great, um, Mark. That's it. Thank you very much. Okay. Thanks. Um, questions that I have on page eighty-three in the presentation, uh, where it covers salaries uh, as in the operating budgets. Does this include uh, currently vacant positions that we're attempting to fill? Um, yeah, so it, it's it's assuming that we're fully staffed. Okay. Yeah. Even though we're not fully staffed, right? Correct. Okay. Good. Okay. Um, I, I've heard previous comments about that uh, $27 million in capital expenditures um, upcoming for the next for the next year. Um, given what we the forecast that we were going to do. Uh, in the past year, and what we actually did in 13 million that we forecast, we did about half, less than half of that. Six I think that that 27 is um, overly optimistic, but I'm okay with that. Um, I think that uh, spreading that 27 million out uh, is likely to help the cash flow aspects and makes um, that easy. But in addition to that, any project on that list that you're bringing forward is coming back to the board anyhow for our approval. Well, several of those projects have already been approved by the board in right. of supply chain and weather it and held up and are yeah. actually going or in construction. And so some of those are, are large projects. Fish ladder starts okay. on Monday, the Lion Pipeline, I mean, what, five million somewhere in there. I mean, there's some large projects that contracts by the board have been approved, contracts have been awarded, and we're moving into a, a construction season, and we're already in the construction season. Altavia, another large project, is in construction. Um, so that 27, then, what do you guess we've approved and committed? Have we done 20? Oh, oh, I'm, I'm not looking to add up numbers. Um, uh, about about twenty million of them that's been so in in the um where it lays out all the projects we did include a status um section that oh, okay yes either says like in yes. contract in construction right. um right. so right. yeah okay all right thank you um and as stated by the others also see that the the page is 87, 88. Reserves are going down. Uh, we're drawing on reserves. That's not something we can continue to do. So, uh, thoughts on anything else, Rick? No, um, but a lot, you know, a lot of these projects that are in construction in this year are grant or are loan projects which the money is already in the bank, so to speak. Right, but I'm looking, uh, I'm beyond that one. No, I mean, our, our reserves are low, and until we start getting money from FEMA, um, you know, we're gonna have to monitor it closely as, as the budget and finance committee, Jeff in particular, you know, are concerned about cash flow and so as well. You know, we will not be entering some of these future projects, not unless we have the cash to, to pay for it, obviously. But yes, cash flow is becoming and reserves are becoming low. Okay. Okay. Well, that's all the questions that I have at this point. Uh, let me go out to the general public. Director Foltz has his hand up. See. Bob, let me go out to the general public first and see if they have any questions. Uh, comments from the general public? Questions? Seeing none, I'll come back to you, Bob. Yeah, um, Mark, just to follow up on your earlier question about uh, open positions, um, how many open positions do we have and, and what are they? Um, I believe the environmental planner. One in water quality, two, uh, we have three open positions. No, we filled the maintenance. No, water quality, uh, great position. Oh, that's and, right, okay. Uh, the, uh, Plan. So three. three positions open. 
and, and sorry, what, what were the positions? Uh, environmental planner, uh, field system coordinator, and water treatment. Okay. Operator. Okay. But their salaries are included. Correct. Okay. Correct. Okay. Yeah, no, I, I did hear that, Mark. I, I was just curious which ones were open. I mean, the, the reason I ask is that in 2022, I th think it was, um, the the operating margin wasn't as bad as forecasted because there were four open positions for most of the year. So it allowed the district to get close to that 3 million number that had been baked in for the uh, 2017 rate increase. Um, so depending on how long it takes to fill these, it'll contribute right. to that operating margin as well. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, with no further uh, comments or questions on that from anybody else on the other board members that are here? I think we're good with that. Uh, we don't have a motion uh, in front of us tonight, uh, but I understand you're going to bring that back to us um, at the meeting on the 15th, and we look forward to reviewing that and hopefully being able to approve it. Can someone hear me? I lost sound. There, there yeah, you go. Try again. Okay. The uh, is that the Valley Press, I believe, had a full page, uh, very nice full page article about the work we're doing on the fish ladder. Oh, this way. Yeah. And uh, I just want to congratulate whoever facilitated getting that in the press. Carly. So, Carly, if you're listening, good job. <laughs> And just a, a quick comment, I would like to thank Kendra for hard work and the staff, the management teams, coordinating staff um, on the budget. It's sort of a long time effort went into this budget. Uh, it's a unique year with the FEMA problems. And we uh, do have some challenges ahead, um, but we did a fantastic job. Thank you. Okay. Well, with that, I think we can adjourn. Nope. We have oh. an agenda to approve. I mean, uh, minutes to approve. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, sorry. The consent agenda. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I was skipped over that one. Uh, does anybody I hear you. <laughs> uh, uh, want to pull anything from the consent agenda? Um, not approved. Uh, I see no written communication or other informational materials. With that, I think we can adjourn. Yep. Yes. Okay. Right. Thank you. All right. 812 I have. Thank you. This is Barbara. Thanks. I'll see you in a couple of weeks.